Xi and Putin have been meeting uh, yesterday and today, the meeting, I think over the weekend. Uh, Russia and China, those are fascinating meetings. Fascinating meetings, I'm sure. Um, I mean, here is, here is Putin who is losing a, a war in Ukraine, a war he should have won in a week, and expected to win in a week. It's a year later, and, and you know, uh, 200,000 Russians down and, uh, you know, dead and injured, and uh, clearly losing Finland, uh, Turkey, and, and Hungary. Uh, just approved to, uh, Finland to join NATO, so Finland would definitely join NATO. Uh, much longer border than Ukraine has with Russia. Suddenly, uh, Russia has a northern um, uh, a northern NATO member, and NATO has a much longer border with um, uh, with Russia than it ever had before. Uh, at the same time, uh, you have uh, you Sweden. We'll see what happens. Probably Sweden won't happen before the elections in Turkey in May. I think at that point uh, they'll they'll uh, vote Sweden in. Uh, on the other hand, she, who I think feels pretty good, just elected basically for lifetime and as as a dictator of China. China's economy seems to be rebounding. You know, not significantly, but rebounding. Russia's economy is a complete mess, a complete and utter disaster. Russia doesn't manufacture really anything. China manufactures to the world is the manufacturer of the world. Uh, China has real innovation and real tech and, 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 and actual progress. Russia is, is decadent and behind and can barely, can barely produce the weapons it needs for the, for the, for the border it, it can't. I mean, you, you, one is, is an economy uh, to equal the size of the American economy. The other is a shrinking economy with a shrinking population. Both are shrinking populations, but Russia has been shrinking for a while and is accelerating. China's only started shrinking. Uh, you know, uh, one wonders uh, how the conversation went. I mean, clearly Xi has the upper hand. Xi is in the driver's seat. He can decide how much help to give Putin, and how much help not to give Putin. Um, he can calibrate the debate. He, he has all the cards. He has all the cards. And, and the real question is, and I don't know the answer to this, the real question is how is he using those cards and for what purpose? Uh, I would also note that she is um, uh, that she is using a lot of this. The, we saw his uh, his uh, getting the agreement between Iran and Saudi Arabia, but she is using all this to to emphasize, I think, to the United States. This is more of a signaling to the United States than anything. That the, the United States, if you want a cold war, you're on game on. Uh, I'm going to do this from a position of power. I'm going to create my own coalition. Um, I, I have a standing in the world that is significant, uh, the United States, I think the signal here is clear that, the, that from Xi's perspective, uh, the United States is a decaying, uh, a shrinking power, that China is the rising power on the horizon with rising influence in the world, uh, and, and he is trying to single to the, signal to the Biden administration, um, you know, that that you guys are weak, you guys are irrelevant, and you guys better think twice about your aggressive moves against us because uh, because of uh, who and what I am. Uh, this is all thanks to Biden's weakness, but it really started with Trump and uh, uh, Trump, uh, uh, you know, basically, you know, groveling before Putin and and then really admiring Xi, uh, admiring Xi and. And launching a stupid, uh, stupidly, st uh, strategically stupid attempt uh, uh, to go after China, uh, it, it's it's a sign of weakness in America for a long time. You know, it's not like Obama was strong. Uh, Obama was weak. He was weak in Russia. He was weak in China. They're all weak, and and the Chinese know this. I think ultimately China is weak as well, just like Russia was. But that requires real thinking to figure that out. And and she. Is uh, is playing to the West's fears, uh, playing to the West's worst fears, and uh, he's going to leverage this in the next few years as much as he can to establish himself globally and to emphasize the the weakness of the West. And if you think the Chinese don't follow just the absurdities of and the childishness and the pathetic nature of American politics and the tribalism, America from every respect. Perspective. Uh, if you're if you're out of the country looking in, it looks like a pathetic country 
that is that has pathetic politicians, that has no leadership, uh, that is clearly in decline, clearly in decline. As much as and 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 she is going to capitalize on that. People admire America, people respect America, people want to come to America, people love America, they love what America represents. But when they look at what actually is happening, they look at the behavior of our politicians and our political elites. It is, it is truly, uh, truly horrific. Somebody said, I don't give Russia's perspective. Because Russia's perspective is wrong. And, and Russia's perspective is from, uh, is, is um, you know, is not based on facts, not based on reality. It's based on mysticism. It's, and I've talked about this a lot. I've talked a lot about the Russia's perspective. Just read or watch Dugin and, and, and read and watch Putin. And there's, no, they're there. There's no positive there. There's no value there. And look, Russia is, without question, uh, the Russia and the Putin administration are declining powers. And this is a, an attempt somehow to salvage their decline, both as a country and as a regime, uh, the Putin regime. It's an attempt to somehow, you know, uh, somehow make Russia relevant again on the world stage. And they have. But now the weakness is even more evident to the world. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content. And of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.